Today, I play Pokemon Sword and Shield as Team Plasma's M, which you all voted for in the community tab. The rules are a little bit different as we're going to be using all of his teams from Pokemon Black and Pokemon White. Also, no held items and no overleveling. Last but not least, 98% of you guys are still not subscribed. So if you guys do like Pokemon content and challenges, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you guys know when I upload. Also, I'm writing this as I go along with the challenge. So at this point, I've not even even started. With that said, let's get game. First things first, we need to pick our starter, but obviously we're not interested and we go out along our way to pick our cat ourselves. Yes, I want a kitten just like this one. I call it Gizmo. It's my actual cat, so there's no brainer there. We meet up with our beloved friend Hop, who already has free Pokemon at this point. So much for good sportsmanship. He starts with his Wooloo and I deal 3 damage with Fake Out before hitting hard with 2 Paybacks. This will be my stab when Winch Bag outspeeds, dealing twice the damage. Rookie D resigns from the Bird Military after a Predator becomes the prey. Although, I don't think this cute kitten will be vicious. Nevertheless, we find two fallen wishing stars, and with the help of the Pokemon Professor, we were able to make our cat big. Well, I wish this was the case, but we already need to change our team, as N's first encounter is on Route 2. Now that we've passed that, we need to hunt for our next team in the wild area, including Pinov named McNugget and Timpole called Tiddles. We'll find Timber later on. But for now, the opening ceremony is just about to begin, and we haven't even arrived in Motorstoke. Ah, nice cozy hotel. Oi, what's your problem, mates? Oh, come on, I just want my bed. Our pigeon picks at Nickit's ears and Zigzagoon's tail, chasing them away. They scamper when Marnie arrives, and with that, I can finally sleep. The next morning, we took part in the opening ceremony and received our sports kit. As Black and White was released on the 18th of September, I go for the number 189. And yes, us Brits put the date before the month first. Without delay, we pressed on to Route 3. Oh, are you going to play fair this time? Nump thought as much. However, Wooloo, Sobble, and Rookie D were all no match for McNugget. Maybe if they had the chance if I had curry sauce. Which was the case because Sobble squeezed it until it couldn't take any more. However, they were no match for Tiddles. Hot was defeated and we resumed on course to the Galar Mines, pinching school kids lunch money along the way. If they thought Team Yell were a nuisance, just wait until Team Plasma knocked down the door. Inside the mines, we encounter Timber, which is the last piece of the puzzle to complete and second team, and we'll remain that until we win our second badge. I called him Pitbull, and we ventured towards to have a face-off with Mr. Pink to see who rocks the better colour. Yeah, it didn't go very well for the first time around, but after a couple more levels, McNugget still can't knock out Solosis. It's the curry sauce, I'm telling you. But Tiddles deafens Solosis with Echo Voice, and the same occurs to Gothita and Hatena, making us able to pass. Did you not know green means go? Milo does give us trouble running us over, making me claim on insurance, but also gives us trouble with this gym fight. His Gossifleur knocking out Pitbull and Tiddles. Elagos was way too much for us, finishing us off with a hard L. However, a little bit of experience farming and we return stronger. Pitbull sets the focus energy and two critical hit rock slides take it out. His Elagloss Dynamaxes and a max strike finishes him off. I Dynamax McNugget and hit a critical hit Airstream for Guardian on his last Dynamax turn. One more Airstream bringing him dangerously in the red. A Magical Leaf does finish our Pigeon off, but Tiddles, the amazing frog she is, takes down the flower with a lot of acid. And with that, we have our first gym badge. We continue on to Route 5, where we defeat the Reporters, Hop, Team Yell, and a Breeder without trouble. Oh, and we get a free bike in the process, which helps as I want my muscular thighs. Hey, is it just me? Or are all Liana's heels that big we're actually taller than her? Well, I guess we'll never know as she forces us to eat snails with Rose should we win the next gym badge. Okay, Tiddles, you've got this. Spam Echo Voices put the Gold Deem to sleep in three, takes down the Fish Missile in two, but Dreadnought finishes us off in one. Mr. Worldwide comes out and two Max Knuckles secures us the second badge. This was surprisingly very easy. No, hit off. What? Hello? 
Oh, my control's reconnecting. Shit. Well, it doesn't matter as we are already on our third team. And this one is a little trickier to get, including two Pokemon from Pokemon Sword. This being a Darumaka and Scraggy. As I bred them on my personal save, I named them Bell and Bad Guy. Don't ask me why, okay? On top of that, I caught Sandile in the pot bottom desert within the Isle of Armor called Monty from Security Breach. Rock and roll. And I wish I had glasses for this cool dude. And also a cigarette. <laughs> okay then. Much, much later. Oh, come on! I love so much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. The third time lucky and one quick ball later and we finally caught our flying bird thingy. I call it Toto for the Africa vibes. Hey, we're not finished here. Mate, I told you, green is the best. Okay, fine. You proved your point. Sheesh. After getting the morale straight with Mr. Pink, we deal with Team Yell, which is no problem for Team Plasma. Or maybe just me. Hop on the other hand, hop to Wooloo's grave. Eventually, we bump into the Master of Fire and chase the last few members out of the mines. Ah, some sleep. Hey, you got some fight in you? Girl, it's one in the morning. Oh, fine. Oh, was that all you had? That was nothing. The next morning, I'm firing on all cylinders and ready to go. I had spare quick balls and can see these fire types suffering. So after catching Vulpix, Sizzlipede, and Litwick, I release them back into the wild to meet up with their families. And before finally taking on Master Kabu, Monty is up against Ninetales and we get the burn as we go underground for Dig. We do decent damage with Facade afterwards, but one Ember is just too much for the Crocodile and we go down. I send out Bell and hit a bite. After all, we can't get burnt now. Arcanize Intimidate is a little troublesome, but it outspeeds already, so two Hustle Hammer Arms do big damage. But the Lion eats us with bite. <laughs> oh come on, really? Arcanine goes down and we get the Moxie boost. But Center Scorch is up next and will outspeed, so I sacrifice the bad guy to waste a turn. Followed by a max guard by Toto. Finally, two max airstreams was enough to win the fire badge. It's off to Hammerlock next and the Ghost Gym, which should be easy. Pink is better! No blue! Pink! Uh, guys? Green's great. You know what? I'll scrap you over there. Fine! <laughs> what a bunch of girls. <clears throat> With our trusty team of four, we gain entrance to Hammerlock, where the chairman shows us how his plasma energy works, which is something Team Plasma could do with having more money and control in Unova. I'm sorry, you're one to talk. Stomping kids, yet you're stomping. Hypocrite. With Team Yell out the way and Silicobra actually able to get some sleep, or not, you sliver away, that's fine too. A little bit of level grinding later, seen as Monty keeps getting knocked out, we were ready to go against Hop and cheer him up with a little battle. Cramorot is up first, so Toto is my best bet. It was a lot of chip damage, but a side beam finally takes the bird out. However, the spat Pikachu finishes us off in the process, so it's one to one. Monty and Toxol comes out, which means an easy dig takes it down. Finally, it punts something to the moon. Drizzle comes out and I swap to Bad Guy. It outspeeds, so Payback does double damage. Though, we couldn't survive another Water Pulse, taking us out. I send out Bell and pray for Zen Headbutt, thankfully taking it out. Hop Silicobra is last, and I knew I wouldn't be able to survive. So I switch to Monty to take the hit. Silicobra goes for Dig, so I retaliate with Dig myself, meaning he can't attack. We outspeed, so before he goes on the ground again, we hit. And again. And eventually, this brings the snake down. No, Monty, you cannot evolve. Okay, ghost gym time. Monty and Bad Guy will bring us through with Bell as my mix and Toto as my support, but mainly for Yamask as it's my special attacker. This was honestly really easy to sweep through the trainers and go through Waluigi's pinball, so I don't really have anything to say. Within five minutes, we're at the gym battle. Yamask is first, so I send out Toto and hits a 65 accuracy hypnosis, putting him to sleep. This means I can start setting up with Cosmic Power and be able to do damage with Psybeam. We tank a super effective Critical Hex and we finally put the mask down. Curse Lair is next and puts a curse on us after another Psybeam, so a chunk of health has been taken care of already. 
We get in the red, but it's not enough, and Ancient Power takes down Toto. I retaliated with Bell. The boosted attack and the speed will help. We take it down with a Fire Punch. Up next is Mimikyu, and this is why Bell is up. We need this disguise taken care of. I don't have a good move to counter, so a couple more Fire Punches take it out. But we're barely hanging on at this point. Gengar is up, and obviously is quicker. So that's one Dynamax turn wasted on his behalf. I send out Monty and go for the Dynamax. It knows Foul Plague, so it has a much higher damage stat than Payback. We're able to tank a Max Darkness and return to Sender. However, it takes us down with Max Ooze. And I let Bad Guy's Payback do its job, taking down Gengar and securing the Ghost Badge. That was actually really fun. All right, with that one out of the way, it's time for... Uh-oh. How many times do I have to tell you? Green's better than pink. Bead gets taken away by Marshalls, and hopefully we don't have to deal with him anymore. He did destroy the ruins, revealing the history, which actually helped Sonia. With that said, we're off to Balon Lee. And this one, I'm worried about. Bell and Toto will have to lead us through, as Monty has a disadvantage, and Bad Guy is quadruple weak to Fairy. The auditions were relatively straightforward and easy, but we can't heal in between battles. We eventually lose Toto and Monty as we go through. Bell manages to pull us through with 2 HP. After healing up, we're face to face with the wizard, and I send out Bell first to go against Galarian Weezing. I make the last decision to Dynamax early. A stab max flare with a boosted attack ability and the intense sun should sweep taking down Weezing and Tojakiss, who would have been a big wall. Marwal hits the intimidation, but the super effective fire punch still takes it out in one. Our creaming goes for the Gigantamax, and we chip away with fire punch, getting the burn too. We go down after three G-Max finales. One more Psybeam from Toto and burn damage finish the fifth gym, and our third team too. That was one incredible fight. This is where things would get slightly more tricky. We now have a level 14 Joltik, who I named Spidey, Prickles the Ferroseed, Gemini the Clink, and Rosetta the Baldor. So while I spend two hours to level up and gain stronger moves, come and join the Discord server where you can trade, battle, assist with Pokédexes and Dynamax adventures, and simply have an awesome time. I also have to thank members and my friends for setting me up for the Ice Gym. The link is down below in the description. But first, Hop wants a friendly with his new team. Trevenant is up first, and I have to ask, how on earth did you even catch that? Did you trade it for Cramorot? Toxel? I don't know. Ferroseed is up first and sets up with Stealth Rock, an iron defense. He does hurt with Shadow Claw, but the Iron Barb's ability assists. He goes for the heal, and I set even more. We get hit with Confuse Ray, but we pull through, and Payback takes the tree down. Heatmore comes out, and we switch to Rosetta, resisting Fire Lash. We do get hit with Bug Bite, but one Earthquake later finishes the Anteater off. However, his Inteleon is a huge problem, outspeeding all of my team. I send out Gemini, but a snipe shot hits hard, hanging on with 3 HP, but a Whirlpool finishes us off. Spidey's Discharge does hit, and we get Paralysis, but we're just too shy of taking it out. He only goes for Tearful Luck, so we press on. Snorlax is up and we're in a bad spot with lowered stats. Sucker Punch does nothing and Body Slam finishes Spidey off. Rosetta comes out with Earthquake, which does damage, but Heavy Slam also knocks us out. And our already weak Prickles doesn't stand a chance. I think this one is going to be difficult with these rules. And well, I was right. It was a huge wall that we can't knock down. I even got to the Ice Gym level cap, swapped Stealth Rock for Spike Stacking, Effort value training, tried everything. I can't get past Inteleon speed and Snorlax defense. And let's not forget, I still have one Pokemon to beat afterwards. About two hours later, I decide to switch to the old team. Charge Stone Cave is smack bang in the middle between gyms five and six. So this technically is allowed. We're also at the level cap and with the same thing, effort value training, it's honestly not possible to beat this challenge. I spent a whole day in total doing this fight over and over again, but I can't tackle it. And to me, it doesn't seem right to bring out his final team. So I pull a poll on Discord, which again is another reason you should join to see the outcome. Yeah, keep in mind, I'm a complete noob. Now everyone voted B to continue to team five, 
But to my surprise, I discovered Turtoga and Archin aren't even obtainable through max raid dens, which results in me being completely stuck. We can't progress any further. We can't catch as they're too high leveled. So I trade with the help of my brother at least, who I've already annoyed once in this video. I received two level one bred Turtoga and Archin called Conway and Blue. We managed to catch a different clink on a different route, in this case, Route 3. I call it Rusties, given the fact Gemini was shit. And I also caught Vanilla called Vanilla, and Zorura called Sakaku, Japanese for illusion. Boring. A few hours of grinding later, they evolved to Karakosta, Garchips, and Vanilish. I swear to God, if I can't win this now, I'm going to tattoo Noob on my forehead. Vanilla makes its debut by freezing the ghost tree with Dark Pulse. Shh, it's secretly Sakaku. Anyways, Heat More comes out and I change to Conway, who is super resistant to fire. So one liquidation takes it out. Next up was Boltound and I switched to Blue. We barely hold on and we chip with Rock Slide. I thought it would do more. Then I forgot about Defeatist. It's the only Pokemon with said ability that halves the attack stat, win less than half HP. Anyways, we go down to a second spark and Sakaku retaliates with Dark Pulse, but not without our illusion fading. Snorlax is up next and we hit three Dark Pulses and he flinches on two of them. The big chubby bear goes to sleep, revealing his last Pokemon, Inteleon. He sets with tearful luck and I also set with fake tears. He hits really hard with Snipe Shot, but we hit harder. So one more Dark Pulse. Finally, yes, finally, lets us move on. Also, Rusty's Evolved Plank. Finally having my confidence back, we set a path through Route 8 and into Surchester. And if Hop managed to give us this much trouble before and loses to Blondie, there is no way I'd be winning. Whoa! Ah! Six months later, recovering from paralysis at the hospital, and we were ready to take on Melanie. <laughs> really? I'm a cripple because of you! Frostmoth is first, and I send out Sakaku, who now knows Flamethrower thanks to little music discs. It goes down in one. I then go for fake tears on Domanitan as he taunts. One Flamethrower was enough to take it down, without Zen Mode ruining our day. Her ice cue is up, and we can't use fake tears, so we chip with Flamethrower. Two of them taking it out, but an icy wind does reveal our disguise beforehand. Her ace, Lapras, is out, and I pray for luck and go for a focus blast. Unsurprisingly, we miss, and we go down. Her mystical veil is also up, which will cause problems. I send out blue to stall and pray for a flinch, but the dinosaur is on point and takes out our bird. I actually go for max guard with vanilla to stall its last dynamax move and also reduce the defense stat with Max Fantasm. Once it's down to two stages, a taunt to stop it trying to put me to sleep, but we're really not hitting. We go down to Surf, but now I can safely go to Conway and finish it off with Rock Slide. What a fight. Oh, Sonia inviting me out to dinner. Do you reckon she might, you know, like me instead of Leon? Oh, do I? <laughs> yeah, I might have to let that one sail. After a very delicious curry and pushing Hop into the springs, we were on course for Spike Murph and our seventh badge, feeding two Team Yell grunts to the lovely Dreadnought. And of course, Marnie wishing to battle us. Which went rather well to say the least. What else can I say there? Once inside, we need to do a bit of detective work as to why the gym is closed. But thankfully, this kind geezer lets us pass. Give us your money, punk! You know the police are behind the shutter, right? Oh, shit! We eventually find that Team Yell are being unfair to the gym challenge, trying to get Marnie to win. But we're here and we can challenge peers. I send out Blue against Scrafty. We do decent damage with Fly, but Payback gets us in the red. This is not good. I try for another Fly, but it's too shy, knocking our bird out. Sakaku... I mean, Vanilla takes it out with Ice Beam. Wink, wink. Obstagoon is up next, and this guy really drove me mad. Protecting and dodging Focus Blast. Eventually, he reveals my disguise, and we eventually hit a Focus Blast, finally taking it down. Malamar is up next, and I make the switch to Vanilla, who just destroys us. I call for Conway, being able to do damage with Liquidation, but she falls too. 
my fox makes the return and hits hard, finally finishing it off. His skunk tank was a lot easier, however. We were able to chip with flamethrower, and he uses sucker punch. We go down to a second punch, as it barely stands. Rusty's comes out, and I set with shift gear, before one last wild charge wins us the match, and our seventh badge. Every Pokemon is Dynamaxing out of nowhere as soon as we go back outside. And as much as we love our Pokemon and not to see them suffer, Leon and Sonia want to do the grown-up things. Keep in mind, N's 21 and I'm actually 23. I hate to admit it. We grind up some level ups for a little bit before taking on the what I now call Weather Tamer. And you'll see why later. The cast of Harry Potter was super easy to take care of, trainer after trainer, until eventually we take on the weatherman himself. He sends out Gigalith and Flygon with Sakaku and Kongwei taking the front. Flygon's break and swipe hurts Kongwei's attack stat, but liquidation falls a little short and we go down to body press. Blue comes out and finishes Flygon with Dragon Claw and Kongwei manages to finish the rock off. Now it's us who's cooking. Raihan makes his house big and I Dynamax my Disney tortoise. I knew Duraladon would target Blue, and it's all he wrote. Sandaconda paralyzes me, but we toughen it out with a Max Quake dent in the house. Vanilla comes and immediately melts. We tank an Earth Power and can take out Duraladon, however, before one last Max Geyser against the Snake. With that, N now has all gym badges and a second ice cream cone with Vanilla's evolution to Vanalux. It also knows Snow Warning now, so I don't need Hail. We might have struggled getting the badges at one point, but we pull through. I think it's time we give ourselves the proper end look. Ah, much better. Now then, off to the semi-finals. Now I actually look like N, we start with Marnie. It was a nice easy fight before, so I start with Conway, and whilst getting tormented by the cat, a liquidation and a rock slide takes it out. Scrafty comes out and sets a swagger, though we push through the confusion and hit an earth power before achieving the knockout with liquidation. More Pekko is next and finishes us off with Bug Bite damage. I settle to finish with Ice Beam. At this point, Blizzard hasn't been learnt. We take two Sparks and a second Ice Beam and Hail damage take it down. Toxicroak is next and we barely hold on from Soccer Punch, but two Ice Beams finish him off too. All that remains is a gigantic Goblin and finally takes us down. Rusty's goes for the Gigantamax and a Max Steel Spike takes it out advancing to round two. Our last match with Hop was a long battle. I start with Blue for the impressive attack stat, but the dub will makes use of Cotton Guard, which really doesn't help here. He ends up using his full restore, but we eventually put the goat on Ragdoll, and the sea urchin goes back under the sea. Corviknight takes the better of us and hits us hard with Steel Wing, although Sakaku's flamethrower burns it into a crisp. Snorlax is next and kills our illusion with a hammer arm when we miss a focus blast. We get a second one in, but a second hammer arm takes us down. I send out Conway now, it's quicker and hit hard with Liquid H. Are you serious? Thankfully, Crunch finishes it off and Inteleon is all that remains. He goes for the Dynamax and finishes our Tortoise off. I send out Rusty's to finish with Max Lightning and we become victorious in the semi finals. After the match, we get invited by Leon to eat as a reward for the battle, but doesn't show up hours after the invitation. So, us being the leader of Team Plasma and forming a friendship with Team Yell, we go create a ruckus with Marco Cosmos. Crap, now that I think about it, will I get arrested for trespassing? Ah well, this music is all worth the while to listen to, being the naughty kids we are. And in no time at all, we encounter Oleana, who really needs some help. She starts with Frostlars and goes for the Will-O-Wisp Burn, but this is a problem for Sakaku and Dark Pulse, which Oko's the ghost. Her Milotic is next and we switch to Rusty's while she sets an Aqua Wing. Two Wild Charges are just too shy to take it out and a Surf finishes our machine. Blue quickly retaliates with Dragon Claw. She sends out Salazzle and we tank Dragon Pulse before knocking it down with Rock Slide and a Fly on Serena. Her Garbodor Dynamaxes, but we outspeed, so we waste a turn on Fly, which we go down on the second turn from Max Brockfall. Sakaku comes out and we couldn't finish the job, meaning our Fox falls. 
One more crunch from Conway brings Oleana down and we can take Leon away. Maybe turn it in. I've been dying for a Tika. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you don't mind me taking over the chairman because he's a big bag. I want a rematch. What, you want to show everyone pink isn't great? <laughs> Okay, green means go and green means sweep. With the intrusion out of the way, it's time to take on the final league. The first opponent being Nessa. I settled my speed with shift gear as Nessa goes for swords dance. First impressions isn't effective. Now I can outspeed. A wild charge triggers emergency exit. And a second charge takes down Barascuda and Sea King. Golisopod comes back out and we send it to the ground and going down the recoil damage after taking down Pelipper. That was a pretty good sweep. I send out Sakaku to deal with Gigantamax Dreadnought and takes chunks of damage whilst I lower his special defense, failing to take it down. It finishes Sakaku and heals. Blue comes out and hits a good rock slide but also falls. Conway seals the deal however with Earth Power and thus we advance to the next round. Next was Alistair, sending out Dusclops. It disables our crunch and finishes us off with Thunder Punch. However, Blue saves the day, outspeeding and taking it down. The one time we need to hit with a fly, we miss, and Cursula saps our attack stat, but two was enough to take it out. Chandelier is easy with a rock slide from Blue, and a max darkness from Sakaku to Poltergeist. Our Dynamax ends when Gengar comes to play Peekaboo, but we're barely standing after max ooze. One more Dark Pulse secures the win. A final round against Raihan, the Weather Tamer. He starts with Torkoal, and I go for Earth Power. We hit hard, but a one-turn Solar Beam also hurts. But thanks to Sturdy, we can take it down with another Earth Power. Gudra is next, and knowing it would set the rain, I stay in the field to chip, before switching to Vanilla. Here, Snow Warning kicks in, and we dodge in muddy water, allowing us to hit hard with Blizzard. And boy, does it stab. Turtonator comes out and I deal damage before he sets the sun again, then switch as he fails a shell trap. One more Dragon Claw from Blue takes it down. Two more Dragon Claws against Flygon and the house remains. He easily takes down Blue, but Vanilla strikes with Hail once again and well, goes down to Steel Spike. I didn't think it would outspeed. I decided to store my Dynamax and wait for his to pass. Sakaku finishes us off with a super effective Max Special Knuckle and with that, we finish the finals. Sadly, the championship gets called off as the chairman sees to the darkest day. So we're off on a mission to stop him and Eternatus, collecting the sword and shield along the way. Sakaku is first and Flamethrower is a one-shot sweep against Ascavalia. Ferroform, Berserker and two Max Flares against Copperinger stops Rose. But Rose isn't the problem against the world, it's Eternatus, suffering from the Marco Cosmos experiments. With the help of Hop, Zacian, and Zamazenta, he gets put to rest in a simple Pokeball. With that said, no more Pokemon are suffering, and three hours of my life level grinding to go, and we're nearly ready. Almost. I bet there's a huge mix of you all watching right now asking, where's Reshiram and Zekrom? And first, Zekrom is an ends. In the anime, he owns Reshiram, so we're sticking by that. Second of all, with the Crown Tundra, the legendaries are all level 70, meaning we can't use it. A lot of you would also say it doesn't seem right and unchallenging, and I respect that. But seeing as the rules were set by the viewers, Reshiram is allowed. Let's go get it. On Pokemon Black. Yes, I played the entirety of Pokemon Black just for this one Pokemon. Hence why the challenge is way overdue, and a lot of hard drive issues. I also forgot to nickname it, so um, we'll just call it Blaze, because I'm funny like that. So with our team now in place, we finally take on Leon. We start with an illusion of Blaze to trick Leon's Aegis Slash and go for Dark Pulse. It's just too shy to take it out, and he uses the full restore, but we crit and it goes down. That's a headache out of the way. Seismitoad is next, and I stay in and hit a Focus Blast. He responds with an Earthquake, which reveals Sakaku. Another Dark Pulse takes it out. His Haxorus comes out, and a Dark Pulse hits hard, but an Outrage finally brings us down. I try Vanilla and Blizzard, but it outspeeds and takes us out. No surprise there. Blue is next, and we knock it out with a Dragon Claw. Dragapult outspeeds and Thunderbolts us, 
and paralyzes. We eventually fall. I then go for the Big Blaze Dynamax. I wanted to do that for so long. Max Wimrend takes it down, and another one is just shy of taking down Slender Race. So one more seals its fate. Charizard finally comes out and takes us down when Max Rock Fall. Was it worth getting Blaze? Absolutely. Kongwei is up and delivers the final blow with Stone Edge. And that, ladies and gentlemen, seals the championship title. N can beat Pokemon Sword and Shield, with a little bit of help, of course. A massive thank you all for watching. If you did, smack the like button. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And with that said, I'll see you all in the next Boaty Challenge. Can Red beat Pokemon Sword and Shield? Obviously.